This is Demi. For this documentary, Demi is going to be our guinea pig as we dive deep into the world of real life Quidditch. That's right, you heard me correctly. You know, that magical game that has become so famous in the world of cinema? Well, anyone can pretty much play this, including models too. It takes place in parks and no flying allowed though. But they still use broomsticks. You'll see what I mean. Now finally you can see it for yourself. Okay, okay. I know it's not quite a broomstick, but you can't see anyone doing much floor sweeping with that. But the point is, the spirit of the broomstick is well and truly intended here. Anyway, we've contacted Jay from Velociraptors Quidditch Club and he had invited us to a Quidditch Cup that he had organized. So we went along to find out a little bit more about this strange sport. And since Demi is our guinea pig, we we'll pushed her forward to ask questions. Hi, how you doing? I'm Demi. Yeah, nice to meet you. How long have you been doing this? So I've been playing Quidditch since uh, 2013 now, so I started in September at university, but I've been running events within the community for about five years now, whether that's refereeing or volunteering or scheduling and things like that. Were you ever like influenced by B Harry Potter or was it just purely the uh, sport? So I've never read Harry Potter and I don't <laughs> particularly like Harry Potter um, at all, which makes me quite a unique figure it is. Um, in the community. No, so I started at university and just sort of went along to, to have a laugh and met some really like kind like-minded people and yeah. just sort of cracked on from there is it more dangerous than other sports I, every sport has has its dangers um this one has progressively got safer and there's a lot more control uh because it's quite a mixture of sports sort of within quidditch um, people can take the falls and things, and we have in the past had some sort of nasty injuries. But over the years, it's just got safer, and people are a lot more aware of what can happen. What's some of the worst injuries that you've seen? Um, on this, we've had we've had spinal injuries, we've had broke yes, um, broken broken arms, broken legs. Jesus. And would you say that because of the gender inclusivity, it's had more of an impact on? the injuries like do girls get more injured than the boys or no no it's it's pretty much fairly equal um i think the girls are give as you know as good as they get um and sometimes you know maybe, maybe a bit more <laughs> So yeah. I think when it started in America, obviously it was like a niche thing. Nobody really like cared about it. Then something called QPL happened in the UK, which is basically one person decided to set up a summer league. So rather than the QUK one, it's an alternative one. Uh, put quite a lot of money into it, got some like investment for it. And then yeah. when that team, there was quite a lot of like media coverage for it. And when the first season of that happened, JK Rowling tweeted, I've just heard that the West Midlands Revolution has won the Quidditch Premier League, yeah. like well done or something. And everyone was like, oh, she's, no she's noticed. Probably not in like a all oh, yay kind of way, more in a like a, oh, are no. we gonna get sued and shut down yeah. thing? Basically, I think there's not enough money involved for them to it's, do like a cease I think and desist. Yeah. It's also that there's but, no profit coming from yeah, it at exactly. the moment. All the money that any of us pay in, we, like we pay to play, you know, it's not a we get paid to play or anything near that. Yeah. What about the inclusivity? Do you think that's a key factor of Quidditch? Yeah, so I think it's something that really brings a lot of people to it. So I was pretty open-minded going into university, but Quidditch has really helped me understand 
you know, different approaches to gender and maybe some of the struggles people have in their personal lives with acceptance, not just for their gender or their sex, but maybe their sexuality and yeah. uh, things like that. So it really helped me educate myself. And we try and make the events as inclusive as possible. Like we want this to be a competitive space. And we also want people to come here and feel safe. Yeah. A lot of people, the reason they play Quidditch is there's a lot of sports where either they have the stigma, so the big stigma around rugby, or the person feels like they'll be stigmatized against. Whereas Quidditch, they can come and be basically who they want to be, the, the real best version of themselves, be included and still have a really good time. Love that. This community you guys have built, do you think that if it wasn't so strong and so like LGBT, you guys wouldn't have inclined to keep going? I mean, I definitely feel like it makes it feel like more than just a sport. Like, yeah. I think, like you said, like, our, you know, our team feels like family. Like, I, the people I've made on this team are some of the best friends I've got. That was certainly true for a lot of teams. Like, I can probably name, like, four or five, like, babies that have been born now through people that Where? met through Quidditch, got married, but it's through Quidditch that they met them. Is there anything you would want the public to know about Quidditch? I think there's always that big misconception that it's going to be you know, some weedy, undernourished child with a Harry Potter cape running around with a wand uh, shouting spells. And I completely understand that. Like a lot of people think, oh, we should separate from Harry Potter. It's called Quidditch, it's never gonna happen. Yeah. But I think just people being willing to, to see the atmosphere, to see the game, you know, see that it is, can be quite physical. Yeah. I think that's what's gonna get people in. It's the same when you market American football or rugby, you show the tackles. When you do basketball, you show the dunks. If we can get the highlights out, which is why we're putting the effort into filming this whole weekend, that might engage with the public and maybe get a, a smidgen more respect than we can. Yeah. So, as you can see, Quidditch is an interesting sport, to say the least. Now, unfortunately, due to insurance purposes, we couldn't force Demi to play Quidditch or be involved in any Quidditch Cup. But luckily for you guys, we have managed to arrange something with Claude and Chloe. You know, these guys. They have invited Demi along one of the training sessions at Wavy Tree Park in Liverpool. So let's take a look at how that went. So what did I think of Quidditch? Well, to me, Quidditch seemed like pretty much every other team sport, like soccer, or football, <laughs> um, rugby, hockey, all the same thing. Literally, it was nothing really magical or cosplay about it. What, what surprised me was how big the event was. There was, um, there was tents, people were staying over, there was people selling drinks and food, and there was ambulances. They had people on these structures high up to film and stream the event. It wasn't what I was expecting. It was really exciting, especially considering the LGBTQ aspects. It was really groundbreaking that Quidditch had to be the sport <laughs> to um, have no limitations on gender. I thought that was really interesting. Overall, it just seemed like a really good time. I think people, it felt like a nice community to be in. There are a lot of different players that do different things. And then there's different balls that mean different things. And then there's headbands that turn you into different players. It was a lot. It was very confusing and exhausting. Not an easy play. It was hard. <laughs>
There is something fun about it. When we were practicing the first time on the field, there was a lot of people pointing, a few people like filming on their phones. And um, I don't know, there was something quite liberating about that. Like the players really don't care what you think. <laughs> I think that's pretty badass. So what have we learned from this little adventure? Well, we definitely learned that Demi is braver than the rest of the team, that's for sure. But overall, I think we learned that Quidditch is a serious sport. I mean, it may have been birthed from, you know, over the top fantasy version of itself, but really, it is a tough and competitive game that can teach mainstream sports a thing or two about inclusivity and community. Do we think will it ever be as big as football or rugby? Mm, in all honesty, probably not. But I think if it ever was, it may lose some of its charm that makes it such a great draw for people that may not usually be interested in group activities. But what we have really learned about Quidditch is that it is for everyone. You don't have to be a sports nut or a wizard wannabe. You just have to be, you know, you. And if you can pick up a broomstick and give it your best, you'll be accepted. And to be honest, if you can't pick up a broomstick for whatever reason, I reckon that this community will still find an innovative way to get you playing.